Well, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this word today. I pray that every single word is Holy Spirit-led, filled with love, peace, humility, liberty, and compassion. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here in our homes, our places of worship, our schools, our precincts, our prisons, our military bases, our highways, and our byways. Let us walk and be led by your Spirit today as we receive this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Many people are asking, where's God? Where, where is God? When we look around at society, it's easy to see in many instances that God is gone. When we see the replacement of crosses and places of worship with those of debauchery, brothels, and, and idolatry to Baal, we have to question, where is God? When we don't recognize where he is, it's easy to see where he's not. And as we begin to investigate the simple question, where is God, it's a very simple answer. And, and so as I've been studying and just asking the Lord, how much worse? I mean, we, we already know that things are going to get to, to, to get more desolate than, than they already are. We already know that people's hearts are hardened, hardening. And we already know that, that people's hearts in the last days will fail them. But what really does that look like and where is God? You may be asking, how can a loving God allow these things to happen? Well, the bigger question might be, why are you allowing it? Why are you allowing your heart, if you are, to be moved away from the Lord? Why are you allowing and tolerating a level of compromise? Why are you allowing debauchery in your home? You know, we may say, well, I don't, but do you watch it on TV? Think about what's on TV. Would you allow the, the things to enter into your home in real life, the twosomes, the threesomes, the out-of-wedlock activities, all of the, the murders and the rapes and the things that, that we laugh at or that are on TV? Would, would we allow that on our home in actual live acts? Probably not. And so when we begin to say, well, where is God and why isn't God doing something? Why aren't we as a society stepping in as the body of Christ and saying, well, where, what, if God is with me, then who can be, if God is for me, who can be against me? And what is this that we're in? Well, when I started examining God's word, and there's a few things that I found just so wonderfully fascinating about about breath and and his word but then also the mere simple fact that God is right here he is right here it's that in the midst of him being here we've had and allowed such a gap or such a wedge to be drawn between or put between us and the Lord that it's hard to hear it's hard to see. It's hard to interact. It's almost as though the church and God are in a, a bad marriage headed for divorce where we don't talk anymore. Where's the love? The love has grown cold, many might say. And so I want to encourage you today by sharing with you through scripture where God is. So if you are facing that simple question in your life, it's really not such a simple question, but a very a very deep question that, that deserves a depth of an answer, that you will be encouraged to recognize that God is right there with you, that he never left. And that it really needs just a little twitch of perspective to realize that he's right there. So as we turn into the scripture, if we get into Genesis, Genesis 1, we know in the beginning God. Now, I'm going to set the stage with a few of the scripture, and, I, and, I, and then I'm going to bring you to a place of really seeing a few things that, that I've been shown over the course of the, last, of the last week. But in the beginning, God. 
We also know in Hebrews that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That he is the beginning, the end, that Christ is the Alpha, the Omega, the one who is and is to come. And, and so from the very beginning, God created. God was there. God has, is, and will be there long after any of us are, and long after they tear down statues and try to take God's word away. It's like there's no delete button for God. So why don't you just give up and get the reality that, that uh, you're not going to succeed in taking anything away from God, especially if for, if for those that have, have the Lord in them. Uh, you can't, you, you, it's not going to happen. But we see in the beginning God. So, when, so God was always there. Okay, he was there before you, created you, knew you in the womb before your parents even had a thought to even create you. And so so we recognize that in the beginning, God, God has always been among us, always. Now, created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So the Holy Spirit, we know, is the voice of God. If we look at the Godhead, the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. The Holy Spirit breathed life. That's what I love about CPR, is the fact that when, when we look at, at life, it, life is breathed. And when someone is in need of CPR, it is the breath moving through someone else that restores life or brings forth life. Well, uh, the Holy Spirit hovered and the holy spirit is the breath of life so if the holy spirit is the breath of life as we know and and we've already discussed the roles and the functions of 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 the holy spirit and that god is right there is never left and we know that the holy spirit when we get into revelation that um the spirit spoke said to the church if we go and i'll just give you one example we don't need to break down all of them but just to give just to to the angel of the church, to the angel of the church, the Holy Spirit spoke. So to the angel of the church in Ephesus, right, to the angel of the church, whatever, whoever has ears, ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So the Holy Spirit has always been speaking. The Holy Spirit has always been there. So when we ask, well, where is God? God is with us. We can never be exiled from him. Let me take you to, and I'm, I'm praying that you're receiving this to recognize that regardless of what you do, you can never be separated from his love. And it's one thing when people say, yeah, 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 I hear this. I, I've heard that before. But I'm really praying that, that today that you, that you begin to realize and receive that regardless of where you are, that he is with you. That in the midst of whatever you're going through, he's not abandoned you. He's not rejected you. He has not forsaken you. And and when you move in that arena, that not that mindset, but that spiritual acceptance, wherever you go, he is. Because you are there. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel 11, Now, this is a promise of Israel's return. Now, we know that, and I'll start at 14. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, the people of Jerusalem have said of your fellow exiles and all other Israelites, they are far away from the Lord. The land was given to us as our possession. So they're far from the Lord. Now, maybe you felt far from the Lord. Maybe you in your life have felt a little bit like you've been exiled from the Lord and we already know what exiles us that it is the sin that separates us and this is what is so wonderful about God's word and just God in in who he is is that regardless of how far you may be from him because of sin issues there always is a way to return home you may be an exile like they were they, that they were exiled from God literally but yet because of the Holy Spirit that Christ left us, 
we can easily be restored and brought back so we are no longer exiled. But I want to continue on to demonstrate something. Therefore say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Although I sent them far away among the nations and scattered them among the countries, yet for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. So, in this time when they were exiled, they were separated from God. They would have to trek back to get back to the temple to worship God. There's that level of separation. But here's the thing, is that while the Lord scattered them, I had been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. They don't have to go back to him. He came to them. And I've, I've shared my testimony before about when the Lord sent me to Corpus Christi. And the Lord sent me from Denver to Corpus Christi. No map, uh, no hotel. Don't check your checking account. And go July 4th weekend. It's a two-day trip one way. And trust me. And in that week-long mission, if you will, it was moving me in a direction to realize that wherever I moved or went to, he was with me. But because of the fear-based living that I had and the level of comfortability in where I was, where I was was the only place that God could be with me because if I left there, then would God be with me? God made the way for them by going to them. For a little while, I've been a sanctuary for them. He will become your sanctuary. You do not have to go and search and search and search and search. He is within you, those of you that have received Christ as your Lord and Savior. When we look and we begin to ask, where is God? There's your answer. God is right there in the midst with you. He is not far away. He is not over there and you're exiled from him. He became the temple that you probably have been trying to get to. He is the temple within you. And I'll demonstrate a few other scriptures. When we fast forward to, well, 600 years to John chapter 2, Eighteen is where I'll start. The Jews responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Now, I always love it when, when those with no authority expect you to prove your authority. Like, what do I, I don't owe you any, like, who are you that I would even need to prove my authority to you? You prove that you even have the authority to even ask me who my authority is. Let's get that clear. Right. Think, think about this. But a lot of times people just, well, they carry a badge. It's fake. <laughs> but you kind of get the idea. So Jesus knew who he was to recognize how he would answer whatever said question was. So they're asking them. He answered them. Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. Huh. Okay, so I will raise it again in three days. He became the temple. He was with them through every single bit. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. When we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, and he dwells within us, his temple is within us. When, when Paul tells us that 
um, our bodies are our temple in 1 Corinthians. We'll just go there, 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6.19 Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. When we live removed or separate from the Lord, we are denying all the operation of God within us to move in us, to us, and through us. That should be very, very evident. It's there. However, when there is a denying of the works of the Holy Spirit, what can happen? When we when we question, well, where is God? Where is God? And God is like, I'm, I'm right here. And, and we're over here looking. It's no different than if you are lost or you're holding your keys in your hand looking for them. I can't find my keys or, or your glasses and they're on your head. You know, the, the same ideology where well, I can't find my glasses. I can't find my glasses. Where are my keys? Where am I? Oh, they're in my hand. What is right in front of you is often not seen. And so when we begin to recognize that God is right there, our bodies are our temple and, and we question, well, where is God? He's right there. What are you going through right at this very moment that you are wanting an answer from God for? How long have you been seeking over here and he is right here? How long have you been searching and searching and searching and the answer is right there? That he has been sitting right there so very patiently waiting for you to receive him right there. You see, it is important in this time that, one, we recognize where God is and that we stop blaming God for not being there because God is right here with us. He is right here with us. Is this his best that he, on this earth? We don't really even need to investigate that question. We can look around and see the depravity and the apostasy that's occurring. We, we can already see it. You can feel the spiritual angst and the confusion and the anger. And of course, as we get closer to, to the holiday pagan season, we can begin to see these things that will come forth in the spiritual realm. And so when we, when we begin to ask the questions, instead of asking, where is God? Why not ask, Holy Spirit, will you avail yourself to me? Holy Spirit, reveal yourself. Help me to see what I could not or cannot see. You see, when, when we start to question where God is, it's one, a sign or, or a reality that one, we don't know. Two, that we can't see him. Three, that we're not hearing from him. And four, that we've moved him out of the way to focus on other things. When we realize that he's right there, now we don't have to ask that question because we have the answer. We can then say other or ask other questions. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for your word ringing true that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. See, I'll, and I'll take you to this. That's in Psalm, Psalm 27. I remember praying this and and I just thank God that, that for the answer to this prayer because I didn't really realize at the time that I prayed it that it was even a scriptural prayer which just demonstrates my level of ignorance but praise God I'm not there anymore I just had a new level of ignorance <laughs> but in Psalm 27 verse 4 well we'll go back up to one the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear if we're walking in fear, then are we really demonstrating that the Lord is our light and our salvation? Because think about this. If you walk in in a level of confidence and security in, in let's just say, your marriage, and then, then there's no fear. There's nothing that can come between you and your spouse. Covenant marriage, God is in the center of it. Everything is, is, is intact. There's no 
there's everything is the way that that it is when we walk in that full confidence. The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Well, it's got this. I'm the passenger. I'm the co-pilot of of my life, and I always get there safely because He is the one. One thing, He's in charge. But He says here, one thing I ask in verse four. One thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the Lord, on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Now, we know in, that Jesus became a temple, is within us. So now we have that relationship through Christ to always walk with him on this earth. You're not alone, saints. You are not alone. Whatever it is that you are going through, and I, um, I'm discerning that some of you listening right at this very moment are going through through some things that, that you've been struggling with for for a while. You've been trying to trying to do it, and 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 there's a bit of resentment toward God because you have felt that God has not shown up in the way that you've been expecting based upon your ideas of God. But I want to tell you this. One is that he's never left you. We can continue on in, in, the, in the end of Psalm, and it says, Though my mother and father may, may forsake me, my Lord never will. So the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. But when we operate not seeing God in the way that we want to see him show up, we then put him in a box and attempt to punish him based upon our own lack of wisdom and understanding. I want you to know, one, that he is with you, two, that you can turn to him, and three, it's time to do so. Because I'm discerning that there's some of you that have been going through some things for longer than you've wanted to, but because of, and you can fill in the blank of the reasons why, that not why you're going through it, but because of pride, or other other areas, fear, fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of the shame or the guilt, whatever those things are, you've tried to handle it alone because you're afraid of the judgment of other people if you speak truth. But here's the thing is this is that is that the Lord is with you. The Lord will be your stronghold in this time. The Lord, and I'm gonna demonstrate how he's never how he, he just he's never left you, but that with within all of that it is okay to go through something because Jesus already tells us when you struggle. So to 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 placate the religiosity of I'm blessed and highly favored as you're walking around with boils all over yourself and you can't pay your bills and you're, you're barely getting by and your marriage is a mess and your children are rebellious. Come on, get over, get out of the religious. I'm, yes, you're blessed and highly favored. Now start walking in it. What is this, right? But But we try to hide it. And then, and then to make sure that everything looks good to man, but yet in the in the in the inside in our temple in in our inner man, we're miserable and resenting God for what God isn't doing that we've not yet recognized that He is there to help us push through, work out that that pain, that thing, whatever that is, and get rid of that. That, that we're not going to be mastered by our trials, our trials or our deliverance that perfect our faith. But when we deny that he's with us, apart from him, we can do no good thing. You see, if 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 I am here and I and and, and I'm encircled by people that are here to help me move a piece of furniture, we're gonna change offices, move move something, but yet they all show up to help and then and then I don't ask for any help because I got this. Then I will struggle and they will be standing there saying, you know, if only you'd ask for help. If only you'd ask for help. I am here. Where you are where you are weak, I am strong. The Holy Spirit tells us this in Romans. It's okay to be weak. We already know that, that women are the weaker set, gender, sex, whichever, and that but that men too are weak and that the Holy Spirit is strong where we are weak. And God is 
with us going through those things to strengthen us, to encourage us, to help us so that we will have a testimony to testify like the testimonies of the testimonies so that we can be pushing through and give him the glory because we have to go through to get to. I want to say that again. You may be saying, you know, I'm going, it's so hard. It's so hard. Yes. And those, those in my discipleship team know that, that when I've, I've said it before, anyone that I baptize in the Holy Spirit or in, with evidence of tongues, even in water, walking with Christ will be the hardest thing you ever do. And I say that not because it's it's a negative, but because it's truth. And I want my I, I want those that the Lord puts before me to be equipped to know we're not playing religious games, that we are all going to be walking through things and that our trials are our deliverance and that within within that we grow in our faith so we can use our testimonies to build up others, but also his kingdom, knowing that he is with us. What happens with a lot of people is that when God doesn't give them what they want because of a sense of entitlement, whatever whatever distorted, perverted, um, uh, certain things aren't for today message that people have been indoctrinated into, then, oh, well, I prayed this five seconds ago, and where's God? God didn't answer my prayers. God must not love me. God doesn't want me to have this. So you know what, God? I don't need you. I'm going to do it my own way. And then you struggle. And God is saying, but you do need me. And it's okay that you need me. And you'll be stronger with me than you ever could be without me because you on your strongest day is still weaker than him on his weakest. So whatever you're going through, I encourage you to lay it down at the foot of the cross. He is with you. I want to take you to Daniel. The book of Daniel. It's, it's imperative now where we are that we really understand the love of the Lord. That would be the first thing, is understanding the love of the Lord. But really that he won't leave you. And, and I know that it's one thing to say, and I'm sure many of you, and I just rebuke, I rebuke the mocking spirit right now in Jesus' name. That that we can say, I've heard it before, I've heard it before. Yeah, receive it now. So when you hear it, you can receive it and say, Hallelujah. In Daniel three, this is this is a story, and I'm not gonna read verse verse by verse, but of Meshach. Shadrach and Abednego. I always want to call it Meshach, Cataract, and Abednego. So it just, I don't know how that, that just, but it's Meshach, Shadrach, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. No dyslexia here. The king, in his anger, because they would not worship his god, Summoned them, I'm scrolling down to verse 13, you can read this. He asks in verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my God or worship the image of gold I've set up? So we heard that it was, he heard that, was it true? When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, zither, leo, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you're already fall to, ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Don't you love it that those with no God believe that they're stronger than you with yours? And isn't it funny how they tend to mock, oh, you know, you got to rely on that God because, you know, religious people aren't intellects. Give me a break. Studies still continue to find that those who believe in God have healthier marriages and that they are more well-adjusted than those that, that aren't. And we don't need psychologists to even look at that, look at society, how, how well-adjusted many that deny God are. But here he is puffed up in his pride. You're going to bow down to your God? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I am. But here's what they, here's what they did. 
They replied, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. No need, because they knew who they were. See, this is the place that you want to get to is being so secure and so confident in the Lord that you serve that there's nothing that can separate that love from him to you or you to him. Many people say, well, how do I know that God will be there? Well, how does he know you're going to show up? <laughs> because he's God and he knows. But it's, it's one thing for you to trust God and another thing for him to be able to trust you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. You see, they were all in with Christ, but they walked in the confidence of who they were in, in, in God. Okay, so we know Christ had not come yet. This is still Old Testament. We get this. But here's here's the thing. They went into they they went into the furnace. He put them in, firmly tied, fell into the into the blaze. You can read all the rest of it on your own. In verse twenty-seven, well, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. He stuck them all in there. Spin cycle. The satraps. Prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their head singed. The robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. God was with them. God was with the Israelites. He came to them when they could not get back to the temple to worship them. He became the temple. God showed up for Meshach, Shadrach. Abednego, in the worst times. He showed up. When we look in the book of Genesis, in Genesis 6, and these are just a few. In Genesis 6, I think that's the verse I had, although I might have a different verse. It's eight. Eight fifteen. This is Noah. You see, a lot of times we missing God as we go through. But in order to get to, you have to go through. God is with you as you as you are there going through. God is with you, and God is with you all the way too. We know the story. Excuse me of of Noah. God was with him. We move to to verse 13 of 8. By the first day of the first month of Noah was 601st year, the water dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the, of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and sons and your wives. Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out of every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply and the earth and be fruitful and increase in number. So we came out, Noah with his sons and his wife and wife's sons. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on land, came out of the ark one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. God never left him. God told him to build this ark Strange as it might be, he did. I'm still fascinated by, like, why people weren't asking, hey, man, like, what are you doing? Can I go? Like, what's this? What's, I mean, it's not like it's like a little little race, race car one, like a little tiny one. It's a big, it's a big arc. And he built it. And he kept pressing in. And he kept pressing in. And the Lord was with him. The Lord, the Lord never left him. 
God was there with him. God was there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. They came out on the other side. God was with me when I left Denver to Corpus Christi, sight unseen, no clue what I was doing there for a week. I, I thought I was moving there until I got there. The place was awful. Nothing against it. Nothing against the people there. I'm sure they all love it there. I hated it. But God was doing a work in me, and and there was things that that I was going through at that time. It was a it was a time of warfare, and in that time of warfare, you tested. Will God show up? Will God will God move? Will God provide? The answer is yes on every single account. God was there with all of the disciples and everything that they that they went through we can begin to see this when we look in in let me see where else do I want to take you when we look at the the disciples if we go into first well first John I'll take you to first John First John 4. When we look at even the disciples that walked with Christ, and Jesus tells them in John 14, 27, my peace I, I give to you. I don't give as the world gives. The Holy Spirit was left to them. So they've never been without. They, they got to experience him in the flesh. They were never without, ever. We have that opportunity in Christ to be bold and courageous and to move in a way with him, for we are never alone. I pray that you are receiving this today because it's the times that we can see the depravity and the desolation and the apostasy and the hatred and the revenge and the just the, the, the decrepitness of this society we need a Savior more than anything. We need to be walking in love. And we have to know that we know that we know that we know that he's never left us and that we will continue to walk forward with him because it is only because by his breath that we are even here today. But we get into 4-4 of John, 1 John. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. See. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Those those in the world that deny the Lord, they can't understand. And we already know in Luke 24, 45, those without the Spirit cannot discern the things of the Spirit. So trying to explain spiritual things to those that are denying Christ, is, is, is I don't want to say it's a waste of time, but you plant the seed and move on. Because you have an assignment from the Lord, and when and, and, and that discouragement that can come upon you will cause you to, well, God, how, how, can, how can there's so many people denying you? And do something, God, and do something, God, and do something, God. And God is saying, I, I'm not, God is not limited but he's limited by what we think that he can do in our lives. The disciples, they found themselves limited a few times. Well, how come we can cast out the demon? Oh, you little faith. Some demons can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. Okay, so pray and fast. You want to grow in the Lord, start praying and fasting. Not just not just praying, not just fasting from your favorite TV program for an hour and then you feed your flesh. No, go on a three-day fast, go on a five-day fast, go on a 21-day fast. Consecrate yourself to the Lord. Then you'll see how real he is. But when you're moving with the Lord, you've got a question to ask. Where is God? He is right there with you. He has never left you. He will not leave you. So I encourage you to not leave him. I encourage you to recognize that even, even in the midst of what you're going through, even in the midst of what you're seeing all around you, that this is a time of strengthening and growing in your faith, not not playing religious games. Relig religion, regardless of what religion, religion didn't save me. No building, none of that saved me. Christ did. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It is only because of him and me that I'm even here to testify. Because I surely could not do any of this on my own. I was a 15-year-old homeless girl. What did I know? 
I knew how to do all the wrong things the wrong way, and I could give you testimonies of all the things not to do, which there's we just don't have that kind of time. Um, <laughs> just don't have that that kind of time, and I'd rather give the glory to God for what He's done in my life because He's never left me. So I encourage you to really recognize that in the midst of exile, God came as the temple to be with them. God is there with you right at this very moment. The question is, are you going to be with him? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you that you're with us. I thank you that you've never left us, that in the midst of what seems like such a cold, dark, wicked, evil place, that we can still have hope, peace, and joy only because of you. And I thank you for that. And Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters whatever they're going through that they would see you in the midst that that question of where are you is answered that you are right there with them and I pray that they are strengthened that they are encouraged and that they are walking in new hope and new confidence to know that they're going to get through this whatever this is you know and they know and so Father I thank you that, that you are who you are that in spite and despite of our failings, our fallings, and our fractures, that you're with us, that you strengthen us. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you just touch the hearts of everyone who hears this, who, who's listening right now, who's seeing this, that you just speak to them in a way they can understand, that they are drawn near to you through the power of the Holy Spirit, that this would be a new refreshing for them to just thank you that you're here. And Father, I pray and ask Holy Spirit that you teach us how to communicate with you, how to be in proper fellowship with you. And I ask that you increase our sensitivity to you so that we don't push you away unknowingly, that we don't disregard you or forsake you, but that we are aware. So I ask you, increase our sensitivity and our awareness to you. I pray, Father, too, for those that don't yet know you, that they would come to know you, and that would you, you would just use every one of us who would be so bold to step out and just share your love with others so they can experience lifelong companionship, fellowship, and the real love of the Father. Father, I just thank you that you're uniting us as one body to walk in love in this dark time. That we will be the light and the salt that the earth needs. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are going through something and, and I'm just discerning that there's just a heaviness. And I know that... that Some of you are, it's just time that you just go before the Father and just let it all out. You you got to let it out. You got to let God be God and stop trying to be God. Those around you are there. They love you. They care about you. And if you if you need a word of encouragement or you you just need a little oomph and in a in a a virtual hug. <laughs> Or if you're in Dallas, you need to uh, just, just let this ministry help. We're here to build up the body of Christ so we can walk together regardless, so we can walk through this arm in arm, carrying our, our Bibles, knowing that the Lord is with us and that we're going to get through. You can go to julieblow.com for more resources. Join us on Thursday nights. I teach live every Thursday night. You just pick up the phone, dial the number, word of encouragement, testimonies, 
we pray every Sunday night for the needs of the, the saints. We pray for our president, our judges, our politicians, our church. We pray for those that don't yet know the Lord. We pray for marriages. Uh, single women and men. We pray for the children. We pray for those pregnant women. We we pray for the for for the whoever the Lord puts us to to pray for. And so I would encourage you if you if you are in need of prayer to just join us, but don't go it alone. That's the one thing we need one another in these times, and we need to be building each other up. And the Lord is with you. So if we can if we can be of help, just just go to julieblow.com, and I look forward to any comments or questions that that you that you have. And if you have a prayer request, please post that wherever you're seeing this video. And may the Lord bless you, and may you be encouraged knowing that he's with you. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.